Well, hello, friends. Today we're going to do something new. I thought we would start working on a paint application, something like, um, you know, paintbrush from the old windows, or like MS Paint or whatever. Um, something simple, but still um, usable enough that you can create beautiful things that kind of look like shit, but still in a nice way. Uh, you know what I mean. So, but of course, that's going to take time to build the whole thing, but I figure we got to start somewhere. So we have to call it something. Oh, I'm already stuck. Paint, uh, paint, 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 painter, paint. Mm, I already have a class name, painter. Um, paint, um, why don't we call it paint a brush? Because I'm the boss. I can call it whatever I want. <laughs> All right. Oh, and I already fricked it up. Okay, paintbrush. That'll be the name of it. Um, sorry, Microsoft, but that's such a good name, I'm going to borrow it. Okay, so we are going to start by cheating and copying the um, make file from some existing thing, like file manager. And we will just tweak it a little bit. <clears throat> um, so, let's see, paintbrush, should be the app name. And what are we going to call these things? I've never made, made a paint program or any, any photo editing or image editing or anything like that before, so I'm going in blind here, but <clears throat> how about we start with something simple like a um, uh, paint, uh, paint window, paint, paint, paint window, PB window, PB window, is that cool? <laughs> um, I'm thinking we'll do something like, a, let's just start out by making a widget that you can draw in. And then um, we'll take it from there. So we'll start with a, a PB widget, paintbrush widget, or paintable, paintable widget. Uh, sure, why not, whatever. Okay, uh, paintable widget. I'm just creating some files here that I'm going to need. Touch main cpp. Because then I'm going to do this, which is just uh, creating a um, list of all the files and smashing it into my Qt Creator config so that I can uh, autocomplete them in Qt Creator. I mean, if anybody know, wonders what this thing looks like, I'll show you. It's just that. Anyway. Um, and then I will... Um, also make sure to edit the kernel sync script, which is now split up into a whole bunch of scripts uh, because of um, a contributor who has been working on a really uh, awesome stuff to try to get Serenity to work on uh, bare metal. But that's uh, not what I'm going to talk about today, but, but thank you for working on that, Conrad. It's really cool. Um, but, but, um, but anyways, so he's been splitting everything up, so I'm, I'm still relearning where everything is. So if I want to install a new application, I have to... No, no, it's paintbrush. Man, typing and thinking at the same time is just so difficult. And let's have a catchy shortcut, like... PB. Cool. Okay, uh, and, um, I think we're good. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and open up main CPP from Paintbrush. Where are you? Right here, look, an empty file. Let's just start. So for starters, we're gonna need a G application because that's the, um, that's the main first object that you gotta create in the look GUI application. Uh, and what you do is you just pass in the um, argument variables like that. And then at the end of main, you usually just return app.exec. And this will spawn the event loop that everything, that drives everything. Okay. But in addition to this, we are also going to want a libgooig widget. And definitely a g window. And actually we don't need a g widget, but we are going to want what did we call it? Paintable widget. 
yeah, so we're going to create a G window. New G window. Uh, and then we'll say auto paintable widget. And you will have no parent. And then we'll say window set main widget is the paintable widget. Of course, this thing doesn't exist yet, so we have to invent it, but we'll get there. Um, and for window set rect, we'll do a fancy rect like, I'll put it at 100, 100, and it will be 600 by 400. Look at that. And let's also give it a title. How about we call it paintbrush? All right, and then all we have to do with this is just show it. And then we're good. Okay, so now let's actually define this class. Paintable widget should inherit from G widget. Public G widget. Let's just uh, add this. I sometimes I forget to add this, and then I confuse myself later. So I'm just gonna do it right away. It's a full widget. This thing is very helpful when you are writing out debug logs, figure out what's what. Um, okay. Uh, and then what are we gonna need in Paintable Widget? Well, we already are calling the constructor, so uh, we're gonna need that, and we're gonna need destructor because. Would be silly not to and let's see I guess this can be final because we are in app code here so nobody needs to inherit from this um, okay and then we'll say virtual void paint event because we're gonna override that for sure and we're also going to override the mouse down event and the mouse up event those receive G mouse events actually. And how about we also do mouse move event? Okay. And uh, what else? I guess we should have a bitmap. So we'll just do a retain putter to graphics bitmap. Um, call it bitmap. This will be the bitmap that we paint into. So we're gonna start very, very simple here. We're just gonna do a simple bitmap and we're gonna um, do like click to draw. <laughs> Basically, that's what we'll start with. And then um, and we'll build on top of that. Okay, so let's see, I guess we can, where do I want to go? I want to go to paintable widget.cpp, right. Oh, already defined it. Come on, autocomplete. Uh, okay. Um, wait, can I do that? Yeah, okay. I got uh, Clang format, auto formatting set up on Alt Shift F, and I need to get used to that, but it's freaking awesome. Because then you can kind of miss. Um, mistype um, white space and stuff like that and you just alt shift F and everything just slips into place or like gets sucked into place. It's beautiful. Uh, okay. And what else did we have? Paintable widget. Uh, paint event. Oh wait, hold on. Let me get used to it. Uh -huh. Okay, and then mouse down event. Mouse move. All right, and auto format, and okay. And then here we are gonna. Um, we are gonna create that bitmap. So I guess I'm thinking like should we scale it to the 
widget size, but no, 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 that should be something entirely separate. Um, we'll worry about like zooming and scaling and shit later. Uh, right now, we just want to draw into a bitmap. So we'll say mbitmap is graphics bitmap. We don't have that, so that's in shared graphics, graphics bitmap. Um, oh, and by the way, the reason that shared graphics, I think a lot of people don't know about this, the uh, reason that shared graphics is separate from libgui is because shared graphics is stuff that's used both by the Windows server and by the client apps in libgui. And, and um, basically the Windows server does a whole bunch of uh, painting and drawing uh, stuff, like drawing the window frames and um, uh, icons, and, and it also uses shared graphics stuff to, to blit and alpha blend. And because uh, libgui depends on having a Windows server to talk to, then we can't use libgui in the Windows server. So that's how I ended up with shared graphics, which is um, graphics related code that's shared both between libgui and Windows server. Anyways, someone was asking about it, so now I have a reason to talk about it. Okay. Uh, so we are just gonna create a graphics bitmap. Format RGB. Let's do RGB 32 for simplicity. And we'll say that it's going to be 600 by 400 because that's that was the size I made the widget anyway. Okay. And then in the paint event, we'll just do something really cheesy like um, oh, we're going to need to include G Painter. Um, and then Gpainter, actually, I might as well mention, is a very, very, very thin wrapper around the Share Graphics Painter. So Share Graphics Painter is like the big um, engine that, that does all the painting stuff, and then Gpainter inherits from Painter, but is really just so that you can instantiate a Gpainter and pass it a widget, and then it sets everything up so that you can paint into the widget backing store, um, or into the, the backing store of the window where the widget is. But it's really just a convenience class. All the work is done by painter. Anyway, so right here, we're gonna want to create a painter like this. And that's how you make one. It allows you to draw into the window that the paintable widget is in. And then I like to clip to the event rect because that means that we don't paint anything that the window server isn't gonna update anyway. So this is just an optimization here that we avoid overdraw. All right. Um, ba, 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 ba. <laughs> what did I want to do? Okay, yeah, so painter, blit, um, and then we are just gonna blit at uh, zero, zero. And we are gonna blit our bitmap, and we are gonna blit the whole rect of the bitmap, and the opacity can just be one, okay. Right, so I think that's what we need to do in the paint code. Um, I guess we can do something like set background color, do light gray, and then we can set fill with background color true, so that if you make the widget too big, then we'll have a gray background. Okay. Um, then in the mouse down event, we can do something really, really simple here. Uh, we'll say if event button is not g mouse button left, then just return, screw it, don't care about non left buttons. But if it is left button, oops, then. And, oh shit, no, we're gonna need a painter here. Oh, so in this case, we can use a painter, a regular painter. And we will create one that paints into mbitmap. That's how you do that. I guess you could use a gpainter too. But, right? Yeah, you totally could. And it would just forward it to painter. So for consistency, I'm going to use gpainter here too. Then, even though it's just a, it's just going to end up in painter like always. Um, and then here we'll do set pixel event dot um, position color black 
Um, yeah, and I guess we should pre-fill the bitmap actually when we start up. So we don't have a way of doing that right now. Maybe we should have a convenience function for that now that I think about it. It should be something like mbitmap fill color white. That would be useful. I mean, it will be useful right now, so let's add it. Uh, that would be in graphics bitmap. Um, let's say fill um, color. Um, how should this work? I guess let's just assert that um, M format is graphics bitmap RGB two or M format is graphics bitmap because if it's a um, eight bit palette. Um, based bitmap, then we can't just fill with an arbitrary color, so we would need to do something different for that. So that's why I'm putting the assertion here. Um, anyways, so let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Then we will just do something like um, wait, how the hell is the layout of this thing again? Just get each scan line one by one. Scan line, yeah, okay. So, for eight y, height, plus plus y, auto, scan line, plus the scan line y. Um, and then we can do a fast d word fill. Um, scan line color dot value and the width. I think that's cool. All right. Hopefully that works. Oops. Um, and then after we do the set pixel, we should probably do update so that we repaint the thing. We could even do like an extremely tight update rect actually. So we could make a new rect here where we only update the pixel that changed. Um, so let's make a rect for that, That'd be like one by one. It's very, very tiny. Uh, okay, so then how do we, we gotta make a command line here to build all of this. So that'll be the GUI and then make clean. Oh, we should really be in, actually, I want to be in the kernel directory when I do this. Make uh, applications. Applications. Why am I struggling? Make, oh, make C applications. Uh, paintbrush, clean, and applications, paintbrush, and pseudo sync, and run. Okay, so we're rebuilding painter. And building libgui. Hopefully we're not gonna need too much stuff in libgui to be changed here. I think maybe we can just um, <clears throat> screw around in the paintbrush app. Secret password, and Come on, PB. And, oh, look at those. I don't know if you can even see them. They're so tiny. But yeah, I'm definitely drawing those little guys. Okay. So we filled with white and we got the little uh, dot painting, but that's not super exciting. So let's, let's make this like a little bit better. Let's make it so that you can click and drag to actually draw instead. Um, so how should we do that? So I guess we should um, track whether the button is down when we mouse move. So we'll say that if event buttons and uh, G mouse button. 
left. Then we can just uh, paint there. Um, yeah. I guess we can also say that if it, if the button is um, or if event position if um, no hold on if rect contains event position if it doesn't if our rect doesn't contain the event position then we can just ignore this mouse move but otherwise if it's inside the the rect and it's um, the left mouse button is down, then we'll just paint there. Okay, let's see how that turns out. Hmm, it's more like it. Uh -huh. I guess. Maybe it would be cool if we would actually line between these things instead of... Because um, notice that it skips over, like if the mouse skips more than one pixel, then we miss, we end up with white there. So I guess we could do something where we draw, use it like a draw line uh, or something like that. But let's start with committing this so that we can we can be like good boys here and actually iterate on something. So let's make it git ignore actually before I forget. Okay, so git ignore. Why am I trying to cd into git ignore? Uh, ignore o d and paintbrush. And we can add it. This. We don't need to do everything at once. Okay, so paintbrush. Start uh, working on a simple painting application. Cool. And then uh, it's a little bit out of order, but it doesn't matter. And then we'll do the um, graphics bitmap at a fill color helper. Let's Obvious what should happen in next eight bitmap. Okay. Now let's maybe try to I don't know, uh, try to draw some lines. So <clears throat> we can I guess we can remember where the last event was. Would that be the easiest? So we'll just say that um, point, last line, uh, last event uh, position. Um, last drawing event position. Okay, and we'll set that to event position. And it will start out like that, I guess. Because what's in uh, the default is, I guess, zero, zero. Yeah, so that's not good enough for this guy. Because that would be in the top left corner. So we'll, we'll do start him at minus one, minus one. And uh, let's see. And then we will do something like um, if m last drawing event position is not minus one minus one. Can we do that? We have to do that. If it's not that, then we will do painter draw line. 
Um, and last wrong position to event position and color black, I guess. Else we just set the pixel. Um, and if we're doing draw line, then we have to update the whole thing. Otherwise, we can just update the pixel. I mean, that's the easiest. It's definitely, we can be smarter about repaint, but right now, it's not a priority. Oh, PS. PB. And look at that. Ooh. But the first one turned out crappy. See, he's there all by himself. And then that happened. So I guess when we do mouse up, then we should let go of the, um, I should let go of this position here. So let's do that in mouse up. If event button is G mouse button left, then okay, do that. Uh, I don't love this magical value actually. Maybe we should use a boolean for this instead. Um, okay, so hold on, let's see. So if it's the first one. So what was the problem? That we click somewhere and then we just draw a pixel. Um, then we would save. Oh, so why is it like that? I mean, it should be obvious, but I'm having a I'm having a brain freeze. Why is it doing that? Uh, I'm sure it's really obvious to, to, to you who's watching, but for some reason my I can't brain right now. Um, okay, well we're just gonna figure it out. So last drawing event position when we start out is minus one minus one. So we'll end up here. So we'll only paint that pixel. And then we will save the position that we painted. Um, and then next time we get here, oh, 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 we don't get there because the first pixel is drawn in the mouse down event. Aha. All right, so what we actually want to do is um, save this guy up here too. Right. Hello. Hmm. Cool. Okay. So, what do we have here? A little bit of improvement. Let's just commit this. Paint and brush. Um, use lines um, to. Drawing continuously. This uh, makes uh, well. Yeah. Okay. So then, what should we do? I guess it would be nice to have a way to switch the colors. So let's do something for that. Maybe we'll put like um. So in the, in the old school paintbrush, the colors were on the bottom, uh, I think, right? Let me see it. Um, well, that's like the Windows 2 version, but this guy, this guy was my, my home back in the day. I spent so much time, <laughs> so much time in this. Um, yeah, so this is what I would like. Um, colors on the bottom and then foreground background here. Very, very tasteful. So let's make a little color selector thingy for the bottom. A very simple one. And of course, none of this has to be final. We're just starting out. So, so uh, don't worry that this is gonna be like this forever. But um, for this, let's make a um, palette, pal palette widget. 
Yeah. And we'll put that in the make file. So palette widget dot o. And um, refresh palette widget. Okay. So let's see. Group, let group, um, G widget. And final public G widget. Yes, it is that. And class name of this guy is palette widget. Maybe I should make a macro that does this. What the heck would that look like? Uh, well, I don't want to do that now, actually. Whatever, I'll do it some other time. Okay, so let's see. Oh, phone's buzzing. Um, we'll do a, we don't need, um, I don't know what we need for this one, actually. We need a parent, that's for sure. We should make it explicit, since the constructor only has one argument. Um, power widget, override. But I think I don't need any paint events for this guy. I'm just going to do sub widgets. So let's start out like this and then uh, in the paintbrush thingy here, let's make a um, main widget. We'll make just a generic G widget here and we'll put this guy into the main widget. Um, and then we will give the main widget a layout. Set layout, uh, make G box. I need to include that. Uh, it could be G box layout. Orientation vertical. Um, and I guess we can just leave it with the defaults for now. And so. We add this guy first. Of course, we have to set main widget to main widget instead. So we'll do that right here. Um, and then we'll put the paintable widget in the main widget, which means that it will be added to the vertical layout. And then we will also make a palette widget. There's new palette widget. Palette, palette. I don't know how to say that. We'll make one anyways, like that. And I guess we should also include palette. Palette, pa palette widget. How the heck do you say palette? Somebody tell me how to say palette, Jesus. Uh, okay. <laughs> Please leave a comment explaining how to say palette. Palette, palette, ugh. Anyways. Okay, so now that we have that guy, we need to actually define it, not just declare it. So, p widget. I'm just going to say palette widget, and I hope it's correct. Palette widget. Palette. 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 That sounds so weird. Um. Ba -ba -ba. Okay. So then, um, the easiest way to move forward here, I think, is to just add some buttons to this guy. So, um, but first things first though, actually. So the paintable widget should have some sort of API that tells us the current color. So that would be something like, um, um, left, or let's call it primary color. Should we call it foreground? But they're really going to be like the left and right mouse button colors, I guess. Because I think that's how Paintbrush, Microsoft Paintbrush used to work. So we'll call it the primary color and the secondary color. Uh, yeah, well, that's okay. Primary color. And then we'll just add some simple color, 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 and color is color. Okay. 
All right, we are just writing this boring code here. Okay, that's good enough. And then uh, instead of saying color um, black, we should do something like um, color for um, event, color for, let's say color for. We can be snazzy like this and make like, a little helper. So we'll say static color color for uh, on gmouse event. We can take a const really, it doesn't matter. It can be inline. Um, and then we'll just return. Um, oh no, if event um, dot button is left, then return. Um, this should be a paintable widget member. And then it shouldn't be static. And forget about inline. Who cares? I don't know why I was adding inline. It's cargo culting uh, myself here. Uh, then it should be the primary color. And then if it's this, then it should be the secondary color. And if it's the middle mouse button, mm, should we have a color for that too? I'm just gonna start not reached um, for now, and then we'll say event button is not. If it's not left, and it's not G mouse button right, then forget about it. Um, okay. And if it's left or right. Uh, not and. And we'll say for that button. button. Right. Oh, and uh, we should probably. Oh. I've been using a, <laughs> I've been using a Swedish keyboard layout at work all day, and I'm using U.S. English at home, so it takes a little bit of adjustment switching between the two. Okay, and then here we can finally say color for event, but then that's not gonna work because in this case we were looking at the buttons of the event because it's a mouse move. Mouse move doesn't have a button, but it does have buttons. Um, and if that doesn't make sense, let me just show you. So mouse event has a button and for the mouse up and mouse down events, that's the button that's like going up or down. But for every mouse event, it also includes the state of all the buttons in this guy, and it's just or together all of the GMOS button values so that these guys, and that's how in mouse move events, we can tell uh, which buttons are currently pressed on the mouse. So um, I guess we can just be a little simple and just give a priority here to the left one, and we'll do it that way. We will just add this helper here. Um, I have a feeling we're not gonna do it this way forever, but I think for now that will kind of work. And the palette widget, of course, is completely dumb still, so none of this does anything. I'm just gonna see that I didn't break the, oh shit, that doesn't look right. Oh, look, it's the palette widget, it's totally black. All right. <laughs> um, so the first thing we're gonna do in here is say set preferred size, or even set size policy, um, and you're going to have a fill horizontal policy, but the vertical policy is going to be fixed, which means that when we set the preferred size, for the horizontal it's zero because we don't care, but we are not going to want to be any taller than, say, 32 pixels. And then we can also make life a little bit easier for ourselves, and we will just add 32 to the height here. Um, to the window height, just to make space for the palette. Um, just uh, hard coding and hacking here. Uh, okay, so then uh, let's see, let's add some sub widgets. Um, so I guess paintable widget. Let's, the first thing we can do is just initialize these guys. So for this guy, we'll say the primary one is black. 
and the secondary one is white and then let's add a way to visualize that so we can do um just make two simple widgets for that so um secondary color widget is g widget this um i think this will work best if we just um lay these out manually so set relative rect uh, and then the width would be say 64 and the height would be 32 because that's the height of the whole thing and um, so that uh, primary color widget set relative rect um, and here we can actually cheat and do something like um, call this a rect rect How big do we want this to be? Width, say, 32, height 16, is that cool? Maybe it should be a bit wider, so like that. I'll just put it like this, because then we can do rect center within secondary color widget relative rect. Okay. Um, Secondary color widget, we should uh, fill with background color. Okay, true. And we should do the same for the primary color widget. And let's see, how do we do this? So the palette widget needs to know about the paintable widget. Otherwise, this is not going to work. So paintable widget. This and we'll say that um, paint. Uh, um, ba -ba -bum, and let's do something here. I will say secondary color widget set background color paintable widget dot secondary color. And we'll do the same for that guy. And then we will just include it. Okay. Now we just need to modify the constructor here a little bit. So this guy is going to know about his friend. But I don't think we need anything fancier than that. Um, but we do need to pass it here, so we'll say paintable widget like that. Let's see how that looks. Okay. So there we are. And um, ba -ba -bum. I guess there's a little bit of a layout space in here that you can see actually. Um, maybe we should not have layout spacing, I'm just thinking. Or maybe the palette widget should be... Well, set fill with background color. Let's, let's give a um, background color to the palette here. We can even, maybe we can even make it into a G frame actually make it look a little nicer so we'll say g frame and then we can say set frame thickness to set frame shape um we'll make it into a panel i guess frame shape is gonna be no it's the shadow i wanted to change geez Frame shadow raised. Maybe thickness one is fine. And set background color light gray. Okay. Just uh, tweaking things here, make it look a little nicer. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Well, it's closer to what I would like, but it's not perfect. Uh, let's see. Where's the paintbrush at? Where did you go? Why do I keep calling everything main.cpp? It's making it harder and harder to find the one that I want because of Q Creator. Um, I should make a bug report about that. It would be cool in Q Creator if I type, if I could type like paintbrush main, but it doesn't let me do that. So that's totally outside of the scope of, outside of the scope of what I'm doing here. But I should file a bug about that. Um, so what did I want to do? Oh right, tweak the layout. So currently there's a layout spacing here, default four. That's why we are seeing that black. So let's just do, um, let's just tell the layout set spacing, no spacing, okay. And then we can also in the palette widget, um, we can put this guy a little bit inside like this and we'll take four off of the sides. That'll give us um, give us some space here for the frame. So I think I think that's a bit nicer. Maybe the um, the middle thing it shouldn't be quite that wide. So we'll say we'll make it thirty eight, and maybe the height could be well, fourteen. I'm <laughs> just tweaking tweaking pixel values here. I just wanted to look kind of rightish before we continue. Okay, that's close enough for me. Right, okay, so, uh, and then, yeah, and the right-clicking totally works here too. So then I think we have something that we can commit. So let's say application paintbrush, palette widget. We are just gonna go fast here. So let's say, oops, paintbrush, um, add a um, palette widget. Color selection. Um, also, uh, use different colors for the left and right mouse button. Cool. Okay. What else? I guess we should make it possible to change the colors. Um, all right, so let's do that. Uh, let's see. I guess um, for this video, we can we can just like add some hard coded colors, just to have something to test with. Um, so let's see. So let's let's put them in a in a layout. Uh, let's call it um, colors container. Colors container, color, color container. Um, G widget in. Oh, I'm in the wrong file entirely here. Okay, so here's where I want to be. New G widget this. And I'm going to put him manually set relative racked color container. And he's going to be at um, secondary color widget. Relative rec dot right plus <laughs> um, say two, and then the y is just going to be say two, and the width is just going to be say five hundred, and the height will be the second okay well, whatever um, it's not it doesn't have to be perfect right now I'm just kind of guessing here uh, and then what we want to do is we want to put a layout in him so we're just going to do set layout to make a G box layout with orientation horizontal mm -hmm. Actually, include. Okay. And we can add some colors. So let's do red. Um, red color, red, red, red button. 
Let's make these buttons, that would be fun. Or would that be fun? Mm, maybe they should just be widgets, actually. So let's not get carried away. This should just be widgets. Uh, new G widget. Color container. Uh, we'll say red button. Or let's just do it this way. Um, color widget. Let's write this in a generic way here. So we'll say uh, color, color is. that or even color red okay so set um, fill with background color true color set um, background color color and actually we need to have a um, custom class for this because we're going to want to hook the, um, the mouse event so let's just make a quick custom class for this. So color widget, public G widget. Um, parent, and that's just gonna be G widget parent. Uh, and the virtual color widget. All right, do nothing, sure. And then um, virtual void mouse down event. Right, so this is where the action happens. Um, so based on the key, or based on the mouse button, we are gonna want to set it, set either the um, foreground or the background color. So let's see, we need a hookup function here, so let's do something like um, uh, da, da, da. we'll have a function um, no, wait, hold on not like that um, set primary color yeah set so primary color, set secondary color, or uh, yeah, okay, well, that's cool And then we'll um, let's add those set primary. Um, keep selecting the wrong one. Okay. Wow, I'm really at the bottom of the screen here. I don't like typing at the bottom of the screen. Okay. Um. So this is really where we wanted to do this part here. So. Widget primary color. Um, paintable. Oh, then we should probably cache it actually. Yeah, like this. And we're going to need to cache that one too. Okay. It's going to be okay. Same thing with the secondary one. Um, identity color widget. Okay, now we need to actually cache those pointers here. So paint a full widget. And G widget M primary. And then instead of making those stack variables, we just put them in the member. I think that's pretty straightforward. All right, and then there was one of those I forgot to change. So I already got this one set primary color. And then we'll do set background color. Paintable widget dot. Oh no, not set background color, set secondary color. Okay. 
Now we are going to create these guys down here and really um, Just make a simple helper for this. And it would be like this. And we'll say color red. Oops. Red, green, and blue. Why not? Okay, so make a new color widget in the color container. And then set it to fill the background. And set the background color to that. And then. I guess we should also tell it who we are so he can find his way back to us. So I say power widget. And power widget and power widget. Okay. There we go. Not used. Well, I'm gonna use it. Don't worry. Um, if event button is Gmail's button left, set primary color. I guess my color that I also need to save actually. Else, if it's the right, then you set the secondary color. Okay. And then we also need to remember which color we are. So we should put that here too. Color, color. M color, color. Okay, so now each color widget will know which color he represents, and then he's able to call set primary and set secondary color like that. Okay. And these things can be public. That's okay. And that should be override. Yeah. Constructor for palette widget is not. Uh, what's wrong with you? Oh, I have to actually uh, initialize reference members. Otherwise, things don't work out. And then we wanted to also pass the color to this guy. All right. Ha! Huh. So I'm drawing red, but this guy here is still the wrong color, so I need to actually update after I uh, do that. So that would be a color widget. I need to set primary color. Oh, setting the background color if a widget doesn't repaint it. That feels like an oversight. Um, but mm, I don't know. I don't want to introduce that automatic repaint there actually. So I'm, I'm going to do it manually, but maybe in the future I'll decide that you know, setting the background color should trigger um, a widget update. But for now, we're going to do it that way. And also let's add some more colors since we're here. So let's add like, um, um, why not? Uh, let's start with the back. Uh, which ones do we have? Cyan, magenta, yellow. Okay, that's enough. All right, now we are talking. We can change the colors just like you would expect. And it totally works. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, and there's a bit of spacing here in between the the colors. So I'm just gonna tweak that so it doesn't look that way. It's the um, color container layout has default spacing. I'm starting to think sometimes that the default spacing is just a bit too much, but because I made it default to four because I thought it would look good, but I feel like I'm constantly turning it off everywhere, and it only fits in a small number of places. Anyways, there we go, spacing turned off. And uh, maybe now that I look at it, this thing shouldn't be so quite so tall. I mean, the color container should be 
10, 6. Maybe he should be. Well, let's not get carried away. It looked fine. Okay, so let's commit this to paint brush. Uh, make it possible to switch colors. Cool. Okay. I think we have a cute little paint app here. At least the start of one. Um, I don't have infinity time here, otherwise I would keep going. But uh, I'm gonna have to to call it a call it a video here. I think. Hello. So if you made it this far, then I thank you for watching and for hanging out with me while I hack on this, because it's really nice to have all you new people here and uh, welcome to you. By the way, um, it's a nice change of pace to do some. GUI programming after all the kernel stuff lately. Um, so thank you for hanging out and I hope to see you next time.